Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Think with a Drink. This is the webinar show brought to you by the Aries Foundation for Financial Education. And, you know, today's show, Craig, we're talking about uh, portfolio volatility. Mm. What we really should have titled this as is take the motion sickness out of your portfolio. Take the motion sickness out of your money. Um, the visual image there that's behind us on the screen is is a roller coaster, right? Because that's what it's sort of everybody feels like yeah, when they're right, investing, right? right? You got uh, highs and lows, and things are going, and you know it gets a little seasick sometimes. Take your Dramamine. Right. Yeah, take your Dramamine. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the way this works in terms of dealing it. I will say this, you know, one of the adages that that goes along with this is, you know, when you're dealing with a roller coaster mm -hmm. and a roller coaster ride, right? The only person who ever gets hurt is the person who tries to jump off mid ride. Well, that, yeah, you get hurt doing that. Yes. yes. <laughs> so the adage here is while we understand, you know, sticking with it and staying with it, but sometimes, especially for individual investors, this gets very, very difficult. It's very hard to stay the course, if you will, you know, or to keep at it when everything looks like, you know, as you see behind us, that that's, you know, going off the edge there and, and everybody screaming, sell, sell, sell type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide. You know, real quick in terms of what we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, what's on tap, that's just what we're drinking. You know, it's, it's never about return. We'll go through that. We'll talk about the different types of risk that are involved, ways to mitigate that, you mm. know. We do have our, our misbehaving with money minute and then some key takeaways that you can, you know, sort of use or bring along with you in terms of dealing with it. So real quick, my name is Tom Alessi. I am the president of the Aries Foundation. I have been in financial services for over 25 years. I am now, as of the end of 2023, a certified financial fiduciary. So that means that whenever I'm dealing with clients or giving any type of guidance or advice, I am always acting in their best interest. I was always a fiduciary, but now I'm actually a certified fiduciary. So that means they like put a stamp on you, like you. Yes, grade I got grade tattooed. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to bring my vice president, Craig, if you can introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Craig Richardson. I'm the vice president of the Aries Foundation. I've been in financial services a little over 20 years now, and I specialize in working with families and individuals to help them define their financial goals and have a better relationship with their money. And Craig will be chiming in as we go along through this presentation. Uh, real quick, just on the Aries Foundation itself, you know, we are a nonprofit located here in Newton. You can look us up on the web. It's AriesFoundation.org. The mission behind Aries is trying to help everyone have a better relationship with their money. Because whether you realize it or not, you are in a relationship with your money. And just like any other personal relationship that you might have in your life, there are these behaviors and triggers that cause us to act sometimes a little bit less than sane when it comes to dealing with our money and our finances. I mean, it doesn't always go smoothly? It doesn't saying? always go smoothly, <laughs> like just like any other relationship, whether it's, it's family, whether it's friends, whatever it might be. You know, relationships can get choppy and rocky, and so the same thing happens when we're dealing with our finances. Right. I'm fighting with my money right now. You right. fight. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm fighting and losing with my money is what's happening, right? That's what most of us feel. We're in this fight and we lose it. Uh, yeah, so if you could just put that screen back up, just real quick, just, you know, one, no, sorry, the next one. Thank you. You know, one of the things we say to everybody is, is you can, and, and, on social media, you can find us, you can follow us, like us, whatever social media channel you tend to favor, we're probably on it, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Tic -tac -tac. Instagram. We don't have TikTok yet, oh. so. Um, the email is on there as well, we'll touch on that at the end, that you can reach out to us, it's info at Aries Foundation, but, but you know, there are different ways on the website to try to get a hold of us, just know we're here. So if you ever do have questions, you ever have any concerns, you know, feel free to reach out to us. So the next one that comes up is, is the reason for think with a drink, right? So a lot of these topics, a lot of the conversation, it's challenging for most people. And a little, well, Craig, most people want to avoid it. They don't want to be talking about some of this stuff because it's not very fun. And a lot of it feels very, very like, oh, God, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to talk about my money. Yeah, most people would rather talk about anything else. Except for that, yes. exactly. So we try to make it a little bit more casual a little bit more relaxed and hopefully a little bit of fun. You know, who knows? We have fun back here, but that's okay. So in order to do that, we have something cold to sip on. In this case, we are drinking, this is from the folks Gray Sale of Rhode Island. This is called Hocktoberfest. So this is a very hoppy Oktoberfest beer. So when we're thinking about 
Oktoberfest, you know, you want to be thinking, uh, you know, the first thing that comes to mind usually, Craig, is, you know, pretzels and sausage and, and deep hosing. fried. Yes, but, but when we're talking about <laughs> hoppiness, now when we talk about like those, those IPAs, we start bringing spice into the conversation, ah. right? So IPAs are brewed to offset, you know, heavy fats, spices, those type of things. So maybe spicy or fatty things on the grill, mm -hmm. meats, Ooh. would be good with, with this and, and, and dealing with it from there. But that's the idea behind it. So skull. Skull. All right. So understand, it's not about return. We have this conversation with people every single day to say, you know, uh, every, I can't tell you the number of times we get this conversation, which is like, what's that going to return? Or right. how much am I going to make? How much, how much am I going to earn on that? Or, or what's, what's been the, the rate of return for that fund or that thing or the, whatever it might be? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not the case. That's not how you should be looking at an investment. You should be looking at an investment by thinking about how much risk I am willing to take. Mm -hmm. How much money am I willing to lose to get that return? Right. That's the idea behind it. And, you know, one of those things is how soon do you need the money? Right. I mean, I think the other mistake people make is, you know, they think that investing is cookie cutter. You get a book. Some expert says this is what you should do based on your age. And what they're not reviewing is, you know, how do you feel about money? And what we, Tom and I talk a lot about is what's your risk tolerance. Right. That ability to absorb, you know, the ups and the downs, especially the downs. Everybody can absorb the ups. <laughs> it's the downs that are the issue. Correct. And, and you know, and, and going through that and when you're looking at it and when you're thinking about, you know, okay, and because we have this one too. Like I, I get this conversation a lot. I don't know how many, how much you might get this conversation, but we have somebody who says, "Oh yeah, I want to put this. I want to, I want to buy a house, or I want a down payment, or I sure. want to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, so can I put it in something? I want to get a return on it. Okay. And I'm like, well, how much are you willing to risk of that? Like, you know, if you put this in and and you know you're in a in a growth or you know higher expectation of risk for that, like what happens if the market goes down and then you find that dream home? Well, that's what you talked about just earlier is the time horizon, right? If I'm going to buy this house in 20 years, well, then Okay, I've fine, got time, right? right? But if I'm going to buy it in the next three to five, how much risk can I take? Because if I lose it, then I'm, now it's going to be seven years before I can buy that or eight years. Right. I've got to wait for it to come back again. And then the same thing comes in when we talk about whatever we're losing, right? When, when we're, we're dealing with, you know, like retirement or mm -hmm. anything like that. When, when I'm taking money out... And then I have losses that go to the portfolio. Right. This is compounding things. Like it's so much harder to get back to where I wanted to be mm -hmm. when that happens. So it, it literally is you've got to be thinking about whenever you start, whether you're, you're a seasoned investor, whether you're somebody who's starting out, you've got to be thinking about risk. And the next one up should, should really sort of crystallize this. Oh, no, we didn't get there. Did I miss one? <laughs> I don't know. It may come in after this. So, okay. All right. So investing versus risking, right? So this is just sort of basic when we talk about, you know, what investing is, right? Which is putting money into something that's going to either generate a return or an expectation of being worth more. In the future. In the future mm -hmm. versus speculation, right? So a speculation is not the same thing as an investment. Right. This is an unknown factor. Right. You know, this is the idea, you know, the, the, the one that's out there now that everybody talks about is cryptocurrency, ah. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Right. Bitcoin is speculation. There is no fundamental behind Bitcoin that's telling you this is going to be worth more at some point in the future. It's all based on perceived value. Right. right. There is no nothing propping it up as a supporting structure. Yeah. So it's just the, the fundamental thought of this, like, you know, speculation is OK for a portion of the portfolio, right? but it should not be the whole portfolio. And that sometimes is what happens with folks is they get a little bit caught up in, well, they made you know 30% or 50% or whatever, I wanna get in on that. And next thing you know, everything turns and tanks and now we've lost 40 or 50%. Yeah, you know, and I've seen a lot of people fall victim to this, um, the temptation to, oh, I heard about a good stock tip, or I have this up and coming company you want to get right. in before the IPO opens, and you know, this is going to make you wealthy, blah, blah, blah. Um, and especially if you're behind, it's kind of like I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. All I got to do is win and I'm all set, right? 
Um, the problem is you don't hear about the horror stories, you only hear about the people who won. Yeah. Right, uh, just like any type of gambling, you gotta assess, can I risk this and can I lose it? Right, and you made a good point there with that whole catch-up thing, right? So that's the other thing that comes up with, especially when you're dealing with older adults who have gone through the whole, you know, paying off the house, paying through the kids' education, you know, now it's like, okay, I'm gonna start now mm -hmm. funding my retirement, I'm in my late 40s, early 50s, I haven't put anything away, <laughs> I wanna catch up, so I'm gonna take all of this risk on it, mm -hmm. and the problem is, you know, as, as that goes along, you might run into the wall that says, well, now all of a sudden you're nearing retirement and yep. the thing collapses. So mm -hmm. you just got to be aware of, uh, again, it's more about looking at the risk side of things than it is the return. Next one. This is the quote. Thank you very much. There it is. So this is exactly what Craig was talking about. And this is, this is from Peter Lynch, and for those who don't know Peter Lynch in the crowd, he managed Magellan for Fidelity forever, you know, very, very renowned investor. He says, everyone has the brain power to make money in stocks. Not everyone has the stomach. If you are susceptible to selling everything in a panic, you ought to avoid stocks and mutual funds altogether. And this is the guy who made a living picking stocks and running mutual funds for Fidelity Investments, <laughs> telling you this. Because what he is saying is that the average person gets caught up in it. And we don't understand we're trying to get the return without understanding the risk that we're trying to take for that return. Mm -hmm. And what happens is stuff turns, we get worried, and we sell. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, you're just after Christmas, right? Right now, and I put us in a time frame here. But um, what happens after the holidays? Everything tends to go on sale, right? Yeah. So do, what do you do? Do you buy when things are on sale? Or do you wait until they're the most expensive and then you buy it? Right. Right? So what happens is if, if, if your stock or portfolio is going down, that just means everything's on sale. So unless you need that money right now, this is actually a buying opportunity, not a selling opportunity. However, in our minds, are wired backwards when it comes to investment, and we do it just the opposite. Right. And that's what that quote is referring to. Yeah, and so that's what Peter Lynch always said. He said, look, you know, I, I can tell you the fund itself returned, you know, I don't know what it was, like 9.7 out his entire tenure running Magellan. The mm -hmm. average investor in Magellan ended up with 3.2 <laughs> because they sold. They got mm -hmm. out, they moved when they shouldn't just have left the money there. But we, as Craig said, we're not wired to do that. You know, mm -hmm. our, our brain says, no, I mean, you, know, you hear the news and everybody's saying, sell, 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 sell. So we get in on that and sell when the likelihood for us is that the best place would have been stay the course, keep ourselves on the roller coaster ride instead of trying to jump off in the middle of the ride, which is really what Peter Lynch is talking about with that quote. Yeah, it's even worse today, I think, because the stock market is so much like Chicken Little. I can tell you, watch the news this morning, I can tell you which way the stock market's gonna go. Right. Based on just, if it's good news, bad news, what's yeah, going yeah. on? Um, and then everybody's following those suits, and then even the algorithms get caught on it because they start getting pushed in those directions. Right. So it's really, like I said, a roller coaster ride right now. Uh, next slide. All right, so different types of risks. So here's the thing is, that's the other part of this conversation, is that we bring more than just market risk, which is what the first one is, right? Equity risk, which is that the fact that a holding can go up or down, right? Mm -hmm. You have inflation risk, which all of us just experienced, anybody who lived through 2023 <laughs> saw what happened with inflation and the cost of goods skyrocketing, and now suddenly my money that was sitting there is now not worth as much because mm -hmm. it, went, it, it, it went up. Right. The same thing with interest rates. So what happens with interest rates is we might have like money in the bank. Money in the bank for the past decade earned nothing mm -hmm. because it was subject to interest rates. You have these strategies, you know, whether that's savings account, checkings, bank assets, et cetera, that, that are triggered by interest rates. Well, interest rates weren't there. Right. Now they've come up, you know, because of the inflation, because the Fed was moving interest rates, and so now suddenly they're back in vogue. Mm -hmm. I'm now getting four or five percent on a money market or a CD type of thing. But that can transition. The rates can turn, and then next thing you know, we're back down and we're not getting the same. So very difficult to keep pacing that in terms of even that's just supposedly safe money. Yep. And then you have liquidity risk. Liquidity risk happens on both. Happens to both companies, mm -hmm. the people that you're investing with who run out of money, yep. and yourself running out of money. Because if I don't have the money, where am I going to get it from? And how mm -hmm. am I going to deal with that? So all of these are factors 
when we're looking at where my holding is, mm -hmm. what I'm doing with my money that causes us to have that panic, yeah. if you will, that says, wait, I, I, I can't lose anymore, I gotta get out, right? <laughs> I'm, you know, whoa, what's happening here? Right, and sometimes you also gotta, what kind of personality do you have? Like some people are okay with, I'll just set it, forget it, I don't even look at my retirement account or my investments, I just, I keep putting money in over, you know, dollar cost right, average, right. which is exactly, you know, what right, you should Right, we will be talk doing, about right? that in a couple of slides. But other people, they're walking at their portfolio, every, the other extreme, they're looking at it every day. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're trying to move it, every, oh, this is up, this is down, I'm gonna make shift, and, and it's, it's just crazy with it. So the issue is good, what's gonna help you sleep well at night? Yeah. Right, and that's where, the, that's where you gotta be, and still be able to achieve your outcome. Right. Our next slide, I believe, should be our Misbehaving with Money Minute. This is a segment that we do in our shows now where we just talk real quickly, real short, about different things and handling of money. This one, Misbehaving with Money Minute, is, is putting, let's, let's do the old cliche or adage, all your eggs in one basket, mm, right? right? Okay. So this is, I'm investing, but I'm putting everything into one stock or one fund or one thing mm -hmm. that I'm doing where I'm not diversifying, I'm not pushing out everything because if it's all in one thing and that one thing tanks or has issues or has problems, then I'm screwed. Is right. what happens. And right? that might not even be like, you know, some people just do with blue chip stocks like a GE or something like that, and buy all into what, but it may be the asset class. They're all into a single asset class. Oh yeah, so there's the other one, thank you. That's a, that's a good point with that. So that, that you know, you could be, oh no, 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 I've got five funds, right? right? But they're all the same yeah, thing. Right. And if you look at what they're holding, like you, you've got a in 75, 80% duplication in, in, in the holdings that are in there. So if that asset class tanks, you're tanking, right. right? So it's just the idea of to be thinking about, like Craig said, not only the risk, not only the tolerance, but but also where everything is from that standpoint. That's the misbehavior is that a lot of times people just push everything into one bucket and don't think about, oh wait, I should be move, moving this or spreading it around. If it's always performed, so why should I worry about it? It's always about <laughs> performing, you know, there you go. I, I'm getting a return on it, I'm doing great. You know, all good, all good, right? Until we run into a year like 2022. People aren't gonna stop buying horses, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> Need horses, right? Gotta get around. Uh, next slide. All right, so the ways to mitigate risk, and Craig had started this with one of them, right, which is asset allocation, right? So that's diversifying a portfolio. So the idea there is, I, you know, like we said, the misbehaving with money minute, you don't want to have everything in one thing. And, and honestly, the idea is to spread it out in terms of different asset classes. We talk about this when we talk about, you know, uh, income purposes, you know, having different buckets in different mm -hmm. places. And there's all sorts of different between stocks and bonds and cash and different things to be holding it in. And like Craig said, you don't want it all loaded up into one specific type. You don't want them all to be in blue chip. You don't want them all to be in small cap. You know, you know all these different terminologies that are out there because what's gonna happen is that then you are overweighted into one thing and if that one asset class has an issue or has problems or, or for whatever reason tanks, then your portfolio tanks. Right. Right, rebalancing. Rebalancing is a, a certainly for everybody who is a retirement plan participant, and I don't care how old you are. Right, the adage is that that you know, say I have a fund, mm -hmm. right, my portfolio, yep. and I have put and decided that I was going to take for my portfolio four different holdings and mm -hmm. equally split them out. So 25% in each one. I got four, four times 25 equals 100. That's where my money's going. And that's math. That's math. <laughs> it's about as much math that we're gonna do with the alcohol on the table, so it's about as much we're gonna do in the bar. But here's the thing with that. I'm gonna tell you that a year from now, more than likely, those four funds, they're not gonna have 25% in them anymore. Something's gonna have done well, something's gonna have done less well, or poorly, mm -hmm. depending, and the idea is your mix that you were comfortable with was four times 25. What you should be doing is like Craig had talked about before, going back in and saying, well, this thing did well, I should sell some of it, mm -hmm. bring it back down to 25. And this one over here that didn't do well, I should be buying that because it's on sale. Mm -hmm. Gonna take the proceeds and put it over there. That's rebalancing your back to the risk tolerance that you had decided upon. Now, for most retirement plan participants, they have tools that can do this for you. 
So one of the things to be looking at is on the website of your retirement plan provider, there's usually a tool that says, hey, automatically reallocate me, rebalance me. I'm a huge fan of automation. Now, once I have to think about it, <laughs> the set it and forget it thing. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the things that you can do immediately to offset some of that motion sickness in your portfolio mm -hmm. is to have it do it. If you're not doing that or the plan provider doesn't have that available for you to take advantage of it, it's on you to do it. Mm -hmm. And you need to be doing it. In today's world, it's probably at least two, if not three times a year and figuring out when that works for you that you're going to remember to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say do it on your birthday or do it on your anniversary so you remember the date, you know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> but find the times that says, all right, I am going to go in and look at my account and not just do what everybody else did, which is open up my statement and say, oh, it's up now. That's great. And then toss it away. That's what I do. On my birthday, I get up and I go, yay, I'm going to rebalance my portfolio today. <laughs> yay, I'm, I'm successful at that. I want to do that. <laughs> Something that's going to trigger it, right? You know, uh, the, the other one that's on there is, is to avoid short-term thinking. This is sort of goes back to the Peter Lynch quote, right? Because right. that's sort of the idea there is that, you know, the mindset of most investors is recency bias, what happened, what just occurred. I don't want to go through that. Now, everybody still talks about the financial market collapse, mm -hmm. the housing bubble in 2007, 2008, 2009. Realize that was 15 years ago now. Yep. But you ask or talk to an investor, they're going to tell you it was like yesterday, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's the type of thing to be realizing when we talk about this. You know, don't get caught in the, oh, it's all going to crash tomorrow thing. I got to sell. Right, right. It's not like the Great Depression. Right, <laughs> right. Um, and then if you can just pull the screen up real quick, real quick for me, just because I... Uh, oh, yeah, your investment mix. So thank you. I, I, I just got off track there for a second. So... Uh, uh, Craig had mentioned this before, and we talked a little bit about it, right? That investment mix, whatever is comfortable for you, that mm -hmm. risk tolerance, how much am I willing to lose? That's the mix that you should have set up that says, okay, here's how the portfolio is going to be built. I'm going to stay at that level, use the rebalancing tools, make sure I've got a diversified portfolio, and I'm in this for the long term mm -hmm. if I'm talking about retirement, if I'm talking about buying a home or something like that. That's you know more than 10 or 15 years out. Right. Um, that's the mix that I should do, and I should stick with it. I shouldn't let some of this white noise financial entertainment out there that that's going to change things. Yeah, and what it may mean is you know for you to reach your goal, if you're more conservative, it means you may have to save a little bit more than the next person. But that's okay because once again, when you go, you're not worried about it. It's not keeping you up at night. Right. Right. So the money the investing shouldn't stress you more. It should be relieving those pressures. Yeah. Because you're building up those assets and you have a goal in mind. If you're stressing all the time, then you need to reevaluate what you're doing with it. Correct. Then you really need to be looking at it and be thinking about how are you investing this and what are you doing with it. Uh, the next slide. So some of the, the takeaways here, right? So, you know, th that's the idea. The, the, you know, what are you trying to accomplish with this? And the first one on there is, what am I saving for? What's the goal? What is the time frame to make that happen? And that's really what triggers, you know, and trips up most people is they're like, I put the money into this and it was there for a while, <laughs> but you know, now I, it's changed or I've changed or I had something in the, and before you make any changes or, or any alterations to a portfolio, that should be one of the first things you should do, mm -hmm. is go back in and say, why did I put it in this in the first place? And how long did I intend to hold it? Right. Because otherwise you're going to do what happens with everybody is like, wow, I need to make a change and sell and do all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So once again, it's understanding your goals, setting your risk tolerance to be able to achieve that goal and you know being able to stay the course the biggest thing when it comes to especially long-term investing is consistency yeah right the markets will go up and down there's nothing you can do about that um but when to people who just stay the course kind of like the rabbit in the hair you are will win at the end of the day if you are the if no the rabbit and the hair racing each other rabbit and turtle <laughs> yeah you had, you, had two, no you had two bunnies no racing each other two bunnies racing each other they're both gonna lose yeah. um <laughs> but you want to just stay that course and that means you know consistently investing walking through the markets, knowing your risk tolerance, and just making sure you keep on pace. Yeah, all right, next slide. So real quick with the takeaways here, right? You know, so for everybody as you go through this, 
it's, it's set a goal, create a plan to achieve that goal, because a goal without a plan is just a wish. Understand your time horizon. How long is this money supposed to be held? If it's short term, okay, I, I don't want to take a lot of risk with it. If it's long term, I can take some more risk, which is sort of understanding the risk that's there. Always go back in and rebalance the accounts. I don't care what they're in. I don't care what you're holding unless you're holding one particular stock or one particular fund. If you've got more than one, you need to be looking at it and assessing and going through on it. Mm -hmm. And then like Craig said, this is consistency. You need to go back in and review it. One thing that happens with a lot of investors, especially retirement plan investors that we talk to, is I set this up when I was in my 20s. They're now in their 40s. It's 20 years later. You don't have the same risk anymore that you did. You probably got a lot more money in there, and you don't have the same risk that you did when you were 25 years old. It's even worse than that, I see people that move and they have an old 401k plan with an old provider. They don't even oh, know yeah. where it is, let alone right. what's right. in there. And then how it's invested <laughs> or who's managing it and what happens with that. So the next slide, you know, listen, if, if any of this ever comes up, if you can just click through, thank you. So, you know, the idea here is this was set up that QR code on the screen, that'll open up our calendar. You know, we're happy to have a conversation with anybody. We're happy to have a time. Just pause the screen right now, shoot that QR code, open our calendar, find a time that works for you. We can answer questions. We can help you offer a little bit of guidance, a little bit of suggestions, you know, ways and steps and tricks and things that you can do. You know, the adage on there, which is uh, whoever set your plan up, they can't give you a second opinion. You can't get a second opinion from the person who set your original plan up. So if a change needs to happen, a lot of times you need a second set of eyes, somebody else to be taking a look at it. Then the last slide, if you would, is just how to get in touch with us, right? So the website, again, that's AriesFoundation.org. There is a contact sheet on there. That schedule link on there, that's the QR code. It's the same thing. You can email us. It's info at AriesFoundation.org or check us out on any of the social media channels that we have. With that, we want to say, hey, thanks, and great listening, watching, whatever it is. <laughs>